Hi guys, Mike here again. We are um, just going back over uh, for Lindsay and Pete down the South Island, cruising around, and others as well that weren't there Sunday. This is the essence of my message, Sunday morning. And I've just been talking about how David went back and he comforted himself in the Lord. Um, and I was saying that's a time to press in, not to check out, and stuff happens. <laughs> Here's a good illustration for you. Mary and Joseph. You know, she was probably 14. He might have been about 17. And, you know, he's got a big deep voice. Hey, oh, dear Mary, you know. And she's going, oh, Joseph, you're so, so handsome. You're so, so cute. And, and I wonder, you know, think about it because they're just normal people, normal teenagers. Uh, if they talked about their future, oh, let's get married. Let's betroth to one another. Uh, we'll have a little house. And I've nearly finished my carpenter's apprenticeship. So, you know, at least we'll have an income. And, and um, Mary's sort of saying, oh, I'd like to have a family and, um, you know, and things. And um, you can just imagine them saying those. And so they, they had dreams and, and they had opportunities in front of them and they their parents were proud of them of who they were and what they had become but stuff happens and all of a sudden this humongous angel called Gabriel and I know it's a girl's name but I wouldn't tell him that if I was you um, he turns up and, and he, he speaks to Joseph in a dream and says Mary's pregnant from the Holy Ghost and you're going to love her and you're not going to divorce her and you're going to look after her and of course they would go on and, and have an entire family as well so all of a sudden their plans change and there's no white wedding joseph can no longer become a respected man at the gate you know as a man of integrity a man of valor think about their family the gossip about the neighbors the shame what about his reputation? What about her reputation? To go into marriage without being a virgin was a no-no. That's a stoning. What about the criticism? Imagine her parents. Imagine her grandparents. How's Mary? <laughs> uh, yeah, good, thanks, Mum. You know, so you can read that anyway in um, Matthew chapter 2. But it's just amazing how things change. Pastor Willem shared at the uh, prayer meeting on Sunday morning about an accident his brother has had and, and how it changes everything. You know, Christmas was going to be this way, but now it's this way and everyone's praying. But where was he on Sunday? He was at the prayer meeting leading it and then he was at church leading church. And I mean, he's in the house of God. He's, he's comforting in himself in the things of God. Same with myself, even right now. This is really hard for me to record because um, at the end of November, for no apparent reason, my hearing in this ear is completely gone. So even as I record this, it sounds to me like there are sirens going off over here. The sound is bouncing off the walls. I can hear things. Oh, I can just hear everything. It's very, very hard to concentrate. So forgive me if I'm shouting. But on Sunday morning, I needed to be in the house of God. I needed to comfort myself in God. Why? Because that's where I get my strength. That's where I get my healing. I wouldn't have been anywhere else Sunday morning but in the house. And that's not, oh, good on your mic. No, no, that's the normal. That's the reorder. It was easy for me to say, listen, too much noise. The noise was terrible for me on Sunday. I couldn't hear anything. I couldn't hear the songs. It was just a din, a cacophony of of noise, I felt like I was in a forest with a gazillion cicadas going mental just for me. Um, and yet I chose to station myself in that place because that's the place where God can heal you when you take comfort in him. More, a little bit more, bless you heaps. See ya.